Landing is by far the toughest part of training for your private pilot license. A good chunk of the hours you spend in training will be in the pattern practicing landings, probably just as much time as you're going to spend on the Flight Insight Private Pilot Online course. It's a huge milestone once you're at the point where you're comfortable enough to solo the aircraft and take off and land yourself. There are a lot of things making landings frustrating, but one of the biggest things students struggle with is bouncing on the runway. How do bounced landings happen? And how can we think about a landing differently to get a smoother touchdown every time? Let's start by looking at how airspeed plays a role in how we fly. You know from slow flight that if we maintain altitude and hold the nose up, our airspeed will decrease. If we keep holding the nose up and losing airspeed, we reach the bottom of the white arc and eventually the aircraft will stall. The stall occurs because we can no longer produce much lift at such an airspeed. The plane doesn't fly so well without lift. In a landing, this is exactly what we're looking for. What is a landing if not a transition from flying to not flying? The key is to bring the aircraft into this stall condition as close to the ground as we possibly can. So let's look at our approach. In a Cessna 172 with flaps extended, you might fly an approach speed at 60 knots. Remember, we don't land at our approach speed. We land slower than that. And it's a good thing, too, because if we approached at the actual speed we touched down at, we'd be just a hair above stall the whole time. The stall speed with flaps down is 20 knots slower, so our 60 knot approach speed gives us a nice, comfortable buffer. This extra speed needs to be bled off. As we approach the runway, what we're looking to do is lose airspeed by bringing the nose up slowly, trying to get to stall speed as close to the ground as possible. This causes us to arrest or slow our descent and level off as we do so, so that ideally we reach stall just as the wheels touch down. This leveling off to lose airspeed just above the runway causes us to drift beyond where our aircraft is initially aimed. On this approach, we're aiming the nose such that if we didn't change a thing, we'd first smack the runway just shy of the third centerline stripe. By slowly bringing the nose up though, we're rounding out and arresting our descent, gliding past that spot and touching down beyond it. Our descent should be very slow here, about one inch per year, as my old instructor taught me, to allow for a smooth touchdown. We're trying to delay that touchdown as long as possible to get maximum speed bleed off. So where do things go wrong and cause a bounce? The first case is when we approach and don't pull back enough in time, or worse, don't pull back at all. We're aimed at the beginning of that third stripe again, but are late in getting the nose up. The plane will touch the runway close to the aiming point, but with the speed well above stall, there's still enough lift in the wings to carry the plane back up in the air. Also, with a descent rate that hasn't been slowed enough, old Newton's third law will cause an opposite reaction sending us back in the air. We may want to land the plane, but the plane may not be ready to land yet. In a bounced landing, the best thing to do is bring in full throttle and go around, not try to salvage a bad landing. Here's the other scenario. We're approaching once again, but as we get close, we get a bit of runway anxiety. This happens to all of us as we see the ground rushing up towards us, and we tend to bring the nose up too much too soon. We've succeeded in arresting our descent, and we're slowing the airplane down, but with too much force on the controls, we've floated back in the air a bit. What's worse, we're not close enough to the ground to make a smooth touchdown. Many of us react to this by doubling down on bringing the nose up. We're bleeding off the rest of this speed. This would be a great idea if we were just above the runway, but at 20 to 50 feet high, inducing a stall will cause us to come down quickly, and we're going to get another physics lesson and go back in the air. In both of these bounce scenarios, we've rushed the landing in one way or another. In the first scenario, we tried to land too fast. We're fixated on our aiming point, and rather than stop our descent and slowly bleed off speed, are pulling back at the last minute to try to stick the landing. Again, remember, we have extra speed to bleed off, so the airplane won't stay on the ground until that buffer is gone. In the second scenario, we jump the gun on pulling the nose up. Rather than let ourselves get closer to the ground and slowly hold off, we're conducting our landing as if the runway were 50 feet higher than it really is, and we'll get a rude jolt on the drop down. These are the bounces that really wake your instructor up. There's no rushing a landing. We descend towards our aiming point, and as we get very close to the ground, we slowly bring the nose up. Enough to slow the descent, but not too much that we actually go back up in the air. This is the balancing act and requires constant tiny changes of input. 
the round out phase should feel like it's taking forever as you hear the stall horn go off and wait for the smooth touchdown. It's easier said than done, of course. Those constant tiny corrections take time to practice and perfect, but once you got the feel, you're ready for landings. Thanks for watching. Head on over to the website, flight-insight.com, to get a look at all of our flight training resources. It's more than just private and instrument ground school, which over a thousand pilots have used to ace their check rides already, but also other courses, training articles, and quizzes to help you with whatever you're working on. Dash on over there today.